Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Chaos Gym. With me, I have Tony, who just finished second at the Anaheim Regional Championships with Speed Dark. What's up, Tony? What's up? So, for those of you who don't know anything about Tony, Tony, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, this is my third year playing competitive. Um, my first year in math. And, um, guess I'm going for my invite this year now. <laughs> Yeah, pull pulled off a pretty a big finish at a big regional, so you're in a pretty good position, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so you played Speed Dark with a couple of interesting cards. Uh, new cards, actually. You played a Kukui and a Lily. Talk to us a little bit about that. Um, so, well, like, going into the tournament, I didn't, like, really know what to play. And I was talking to a couple of friends. Um, I was talking to Chris Abernathy. Kevin Abernathy, uh, Roberto Lozada, um, John Turner, and Adrian Montoya. All of them are from Colorado, really good players. And um, I just didn't really know what to play, and I really wanted to go with like the most consistent choice, which um, either would have been Vespaquin or a Dark Eye variant. And, like... Hmm... Adrian, like, told me to switch the two cards. And, like, originally we were just playing Chris's same 60, who won Georgia. Correct. And I just didn't know what to do at this point, because it was already about, like, 2 in the morning. And I had I had a plume box built. And, I like, literally, I built the deck in the car. <laughs> and it was either... 2N and a Lily, and I cut the center lady because, like, how I felt was you're hitting, you're gonna be KOing them anyways, like, against Mir. Like, the only thing that it would have helped against was Evil Tall, and I played against Evil Tall three times, but I never really needed it. Okay. And then Lily, I would definitely end up cutting, like, it really, it didn't do anything. Okay. <clears throat> so, Speed Dark. That's pretty much a good explanation of why you chose to play it. So I'll let you uh, jump into your day one report then. Okay. Um, round one, I played against Evil Tall, Guard with Tauros. Okay. And game one, I ended up winning. I just, he started Tauros and I Oblivion Wing twice. And just chipped the Tauros and then Dark Pulse after and hit the Taurus for a lot <laughs> the Taurus died and then afterwards he just couldn't really respond like I had I had too many energy on the board and then game two um I don't really remember what happened game two but I think I think he like went nuts like he hit a he hit a couple of max flexes and but um I just kind of went ham like, my turn right after. Sure. And took game two. And then round two was against Turbo Dark. And game one, like, we both went off. But I hit double experience share. I hit the Fighting Fury Belt. I started... <laughs> I started Baby Evil Tall. So it was just a really good position for me. And I paralleled him turn one. But he hit, like, three Max Elixir, but didn't hit, like, Escape Rope or Switch. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, this is a good position. And um, I just ended up winning like the energy war in the end. So I won game one and then game two. Um, he went first and then he got, he got more energy in play than me. But I just started Baby Evil Tall again, Oblivion Winged. And then <laughs> literally that's all I used was Evil Tall like the whole day. Like <laughs> and then just... Just, just to set up the board. Card's really good. Um, but I just used Evil Tall, Oblivion Wing, and then I had enough energy to where I was just KOing everything. So I took game two. And then game three, I played against Jimmy Zane playing Waterbox. Okay. And um, I heard people talking about the deck, but I didn't really know what was being played in it. Correct. Like, I was, um, so I thought there was gonna be like a red eyes or something. So I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my baby evil tall on the bench just in case. Um so game one I just uh I ended up losing, so 
I was like, okay. Just, like, see what was in it, what he I was like, okay. And then, game two, I ended up winning because I got enough energy in the board. I started Evil to fall, hit Oblivion Wing, and then, um, the parallel ended up helping a lot because he couldn't get rid of it. So then I was reducing 20 and I benched, I put my bench to three. So then I knocked out Supa and Shaman. And he was just in a really bad spot. And, um, I killed the Manaphy. Like, of I was doing, like, I thought, because he played two Manaphy, so, like, the minute the Manaphy's gone, like, it just made it harder for him, because then he can't keep retreating, and then he can't keep all, like, all of his energy in place. Okay. So once the Manaphy was gone, like, it just made the matchup a lot easier. And then I won game two, and then once we got to game three, it was already time, so we just tied. Okay. Um, round four was against Megare with Magurna. So, I think Megare is an okay matchup, but at the same time it isn't. It just depends on how they start setting up. But I was also playing the two lab and the one parallel. So, they both help in the manner of the situation of depending on how they set up. Like, if you play first and turn one lab and then end, I think you're going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but game one, he, he got a insane start. Like, he hit, he hit all eight of his Pokemon turn one, and, like, attached, and it was just insane. And, like, I go, I couldn't hit a stadium, and I was like, what? <laughs> it was just, it was hard. Um, but I ended up winning game one, because I paralleled and hexed him the same turn. And he couldn't really respond to that. Mm -hmm. So once once I did that, I also got double experience share in play, and uh, he couldn't he couldn't really respond. So then I ended up winning game one, and then game two uh, he got a he got a crazy start again, and uh, actually no, he started Dragon Knight. Oh boy. So it was it was pretty bad for him. But I he ended up winning game two and then we went to game three and I swung it by starting Evil Tall. Because if you start Evil Tall in the matchup, um it takes it they it makes them it forces them to a seven prize game. Okay. Yeah. So it makes it a lot easier and then you're just getting energy in play, so um I ended up winning that game. And then my next round was against Tauros Garb with Hammers, and I didn't really know how to play against this, but I was like, I'll just Oblivion Wing, and then once I have enough energy, I'll just go with Darkrai. Hammering you, then they can't really discard your energy, because you keep putting them back on. Mm -hmm. But I just kept Oblivion Winging, and then once I had enough energy... Dark Eye was hitting for like 220. So all of his tours were just getting KO. Um, but literally every turn he a uh, red card delinquented. So it was pretty annoying. <laughs> that sounds awful. Yeah. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> and then um, round six I played against Jose playing Gyarados. And I knew I knew how to play the matchup, but I just had we both had like really bad starts game one. Um, we both missed energy attachments for a while, so we we were just literally sitting there. And then, um, especially against Gyarados, like with Darkrai, if you're missing an energy attachment versus a deck that takes a one for two prize trade, it just doesn't become that favorable anymore. Um. He ended up winning game one because he played Kukui. <laughs> and he broke my Dark Ride at the Fighting Fury belt. And um, I prized my last baby Evil Tall. So he won game one. And then game two, I just dead true. So. Round seven was Evil Tall, Tauros Garbodor. He started Tauros again, I started Evil Tall. 
same thing. I just oblivion winged, and then once I had enough energy, I was dark pulsing. Um, evil tall, the white cyclone, and I also played the one enhanced hammer in the flare grunt, mm -hmm. so it made it made it really favorable versus evil tall too. Um, and then round eight was versus Mega Rage Ultion. I lost game one because he got an instant and I couldn't hit my stadium. And then game two, um, I just went off. I hit like three max elixir turn one. I labbed him turn one and, I and he just didn't really have a response. And then game three, um, all I needed was an escape rope to win the game. But it was my next card after I took him word, but it's okay. <laughs> and then round nine was versus Mega Ray again, but it was metal this time. And I was like, oh boy. Um, game one, I ended up winning. I started Evil Tall again, and he attached to DCE, and I enhanced hammered it right away. And I just labbed, and, and then once he had like all eight of his Pokemon in play, I paralleled him. And he had his Dragonite in play too already, so when I paralleled him, it was just pretty much over because he already played Super Odd too. Mm -hmm. So he we would we just went straight to game two, and then game two he just had a really good start, and I just got destroyed. And then game three, um. I hit like three max licks in one. After my end, but he hit sky filled. But he missed the mega turbo, so I was like, whoa. Um, I winning game three because I had the VS Seeker for Lysander in the end. Um, and then going into day two, I was already, I was 6 1 2. Mm -hmm. And round one was versus Mega Mewtwo. And it's it's a good but not good matchup. If the Mewtwo player knows how to play it, then Darkrai will lose. Mm, I remember I was sitting next to you that game and he made a huge misplay. Yeah, he uh so with Darkrai having resistance, um he misplayed because he was only hitting for a hundred and seventy. Attached again to KO the Dark Guy, and that's what lost him the game, game one. Yeah, he, I know he had turbo yeah. in his hand or something, and he was like, Can you let me turbo? And you were like, Nope. <laughs> yeah. I mean, especially in being top 32, like, I I felt bad, but then I didn't, because it's also. You have, to, you have to know what you're doing at that point. Right. Especially if you don't know, like, if cards have resistance or not. Like. And then round two, I played against. Alex Bob and Reese playing Turbo Dark, so we played Mirror. And uh, game one, he escape roped me three times. And then finally Lysander to Dark Rye, and I was like, what? <laughs> I, I was like, what was the point of this? And like, he didn't, he didn't even play like anything, like, it just made no sense. But I guess he did it to Shaman for like two cards. I was like, <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna end though. Um, but I ended up hitting switch and then oblivion wing and then I hit double max elixir and then I sycamored into two max elixirs and then I had like maybe eight energy in play by like turn three and we went straight to game two. That's crazy. Yeah, and then when we were in game two, he played first, and he dead drew again. I was like, what is going on? So I took game two as well. And then round three was versus Lawrence playing Turbo Dark, and he played the Taurus, which Taurus is really good for Mir. Um, he... I started Darkrai, and I started Evil Paw, and I just, I was Oblivion winging for a while, till I had enough energy in play, and uh, I won game one, because I just had 
energy in play and he just couldn't really keep up. But he and me and I hit the VF Seeker for the Lysander. But I still had like two or three VF Seekers left. Mm-hmm. And then game two, I just lost because he had he had too many and or too, yeah too many energy in play, and it was just it was too overwhelming. So it was like mm-hmm. game three. And then when we hit when we hit game three, um, he like it was either I hit the Taurus or like pass. But I just decided to hit the Taurus because I was like, if I hit VF Seeker, I could potentially win. So I just, I went for it. But, <laughs> I don't know. Take but I, yeah, I ended up losing game three. But, because he, uh, he just retreated Dark Rider and then Mad Bolt for the game. Because he had two prizes left. But, and then round four was versus Magari again. And I lost game one because he just, he set up way too fast and I just didn't have a response. Like when Mega Ray goes off, it goes off. Yeah. And then game two, I hit turn one end, turn one lab. And then when he attached to DC, I got the hammer. And every time he like attached, I was just like flare grunt. It was just a really bad position for him. And then when we hit the, uh, when we got to game three, it was already time. So I was like, dang. And then my last round was versus Waterbox again. Ed, Edgar? I don't really know. Um, but he was playing Waterbox with like a couple of different cards. He played like Lucky Helmet and Floatstone and stuff. Or, well, he should be playing Floatstone, but like Lucky Helmet. Mm-hmm. Um, but it like I ended up losing game one because I couldn't set up and he got set up pretty fast and consistently, so I lost game one. And then game two I just killed the mana fee right away. So then it put me in a really good position. And then I oblivion winged like twice on the Taurus. I had enough energy in play and then just started dark pulsing. I just dark pulsed for the last two prizes, and then when we got to game three, it was just really close. He had one prize left, and I had two, and he end me, and uh, I had like six cards left in my deck, and all I needed was... But I had trainers and all still, so I was like... It was, it was a still high chance of hitting it. Yeah. But I uh, VF secured for the Lysander for the Lapras and then won. Okay. So it was a very close game. Yeah, it was it was really close. So now you're in top 8. Probably feels pretty good. Yeah, last time I cut regionals was in seniors. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's got to feel good. You know, as, a, as a master, you finally managed to cut one. Yeah. So... Now you're in top eight. Run us through that one. Um. So my first round of opponent in top eight is versus Igor, and feeling feeling pretty excited actually, just because of the fact that I made top eight, and I know it's a really it's a really good matchup because it's evil tall Taurus and Garb. Um. All I had to do was play the matchup right and I think I could win. And um he started Taurus and I started Evil Tall. So I was just oblivion winging a couple of times. But like his turn one like his turn one game one was insane because he shaman he um he shaman for six, he ninja boyed the shaman and then Ultra Ball for the shaman again. Jesus. And then Shaman, in. so like it was, it was pretty insane. That sounds but nutty. It it was. I was like, "What? You can do that?" <laughs> but he, um, yeah. But I, I got enough energy in play to where I could KO Evil Tall, or even two shot Evil Tall. Sure. And I got both my experience share in play. And, um, I KO'd Taurus really fast. Okay. 
and then game two, he was going he was going with Fright Night, and the sixty sixty was pretty pretty underwhelming because you're just hitting all over the board, and like I I was still attacking with the dark ride, but I was hitting for like a hundred, not fast enough, and. I ended up losing game two. Mm-hmm. The Fright Night hurts a lot too because you're not playing center lady. So it just, like, you can't heal 60 wherever. Yeah, it's the risk you took against Evatol, but Yeah, but Kakui actually helped me a lot because in game three, um, I Dark Pulse and Evatol for 160. And then he KO'd the evil tall or the dark guy. <laughs> and um I sent uh, my evil tall and Kuid and then Oblivion Wing for fifty, which was two ten on the evil tall with the belt. Oh, that's dirty. I know. And he was like, It's not knockout and it was like it's two ten. <laughs> and he was like, Oh, <laughs> oh oops. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. And I was like, You're fine. But like the and then, like, he didn't really have a response to Evil Tall after. Because he couldn't KO Evil Tall with um, Evil Tall EX. Like, there wasn't enough energy in play. Mm-hmm. So, it, like, the Evil Tall, the Evil Tall with Kakui was really good. So, I did that. And then, oh, but, like, turn, my turn one, because he played first, I got double Max Elixir and a test. But I escape rope. Okay. And he sent Trubbish, but I dark pulse for the knockout right away. So I was I was up one prize already. Yeah. And then he knocked out the dark right, and then I Kakui, so then I get the knockout. And then I have three prizes left, and then he has Shaman and Trubbish. And he has four prizes left and I have three. And I was like, all I have to do is Lysander the Shaman and the Trubbish and I could win. As long as I don't get end, I'll be okay. So, I Lysander the Shaman first, because I don't want him to parallel it. So then I have one prize left, and he didn't have N. So then my next, I train his Mel for VS Seeker, and then VS Seeker for the Chubbish. Okay. And then Dark Pulse for the Knockout. Awesome. Yeah. They took out Igor. Yeah. And now you're now you're moving on to top four. Now you're probably feeling pretty good. Yeah, top four was versus Jeffrey Chang playing Vespa Quinn Zoroark. And Vespa Quinn is easily the hardest matchup for Dark Guy. Um because they play Rattatus, Team Belt, and there's just so much crazy stuff that you could do with Vespa Quinn. to snatch up, but I'm gonna try my best. Um, but he starts he starts like two Zorua and gets like three Combi on the bench and has like seven Pokemon in his discard already. And I'm like, okay. This is a problem. <laughs> yeah. So but ended up dark pulsing for like eighty turn one, so I got the first knockout, which is always good versus Vespi. And he stand in with Zoroark and then Mind Jack for 160. And then I just detach and I got double experience share. And then I end in the lab. And then I dark pulsed for the knockout for 100 on the Zoroark. Okay. So I was up two, two to si- or, uh, four to six. Um. So then he ends, I think, and then he just be revenges for the knockout. And then I start for the knockout. He put my energy in place. Um, and then after that, like he just we just kept going back and forth on like the price trade, mm-hmm. and I ended up winning mm-hmm. one. In game two, Jeffrey just got set up really fast and ended up winning. Like, it was one of those Vespa Quinn turns where they have, like, 12 Pokemon in the Discord already. And, like, they just keep evolving, like, the following turn, and then you can't really KO anything after. 
my favorite turns. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Jeffrey took game two, and then game three was pretty insane because I start baby, no, I start Darkrai, and he has two Combi on the bench and a Shaman. So I escape rope into Evil Tall, attach a Dark Energy, fighting Fury Belt the Evil Tall, and I get the first KO on the Combi, which is really big, especially with Evil Tall having a fighting Fury Belt. Um, so I got the first knockout, and then he ends me, and my hand was two Dark Energy and the Flare Grunt. So I was like, if he didn't end, I most likely would have lost in top four. Okay, so you got pretty, pretty fortunate he ended you. <laughs> Yeah, so he end, and then he didn't, oh, but I also got lab, I also had lab in play, so, my turn one was, like, escape rope, kill combi, lab, um, like, two max elixir, so I had, like, three energy in play, and then oblivion wing, so I had four energy in play already, mm-hmm. and then he end me the following and then he didn't hit Zoroark, so he had Zorua, and then um, he he missed Zoroark, and then I hit Kakui, so then I Oblivion Winked for 60 for the knockout. Okay. And then it was it was a uh, 4 to 6 again. And then he kills Evil Tall, so then I send up Dark Eye, and that turn, Jeffrey played down two Shaman, and I was like, well, I'm not going to say that's a misplay, but it's not a good thing to do versus the Dark Ride, because then it becomes easy prizes. So then um, I Lysander, Shaman, and then KO it, and then Jeffrey doesn't have the end the following turn, and then I have the, I have two trainers, and then trainers, and I'll for the Eager for the Shaman the following turn. That sounds like a pretty fortunate series of events. Yeah. <laughs> And now you're in the finals, where everything seemed to kind of, I guess, go wrong? I wouldn't say go wrong, but... Yeah. <laughs> it, oh. was, it was intense. I'll let you talk about those then. Okay. Um, so, with Kenny having Salamance, it basically limits me to not playing everything that I did want to play. Because then Salamance literally just kills me. <laughs> so <laughs> I I started Shaman I think like two out of three of the game. And it was just really bad. But so I started Shaman game one and um I Ultra Balls for Evil Tall. So I benched the Evil Tall and then I Ultra Balls for Shaman. And then I bench Shaman, set it, set it up for six. And then I turn one parallel, which parallel hurts both of us because it limits both of us to only can't bench as like mini Pokemon as we wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, but I hit turn one escape rope, so I switch into Evil Tall, and then I hit a Dark Guy, so I bench it, and then I just I think I Ender Sycamore, and then I just pass. And then he goes, and then he get, he has a couple of Dark Eye in play. I think Garatina, but I know he didn't have Salamence game one, okay. which was really good for me because it was like I can't get KO'd as easy now. Mm-hmm. As long as long as like he keeps attaching Double Dragon to Garatina, like it's gonna be hard, but at the same time, it's not as bad if it would have been Salamence. But Game one, like, I just kept Oblivion winning game, um, and he did the same, but I ended up getting enough Dark Energy in play by, like, a couple of turns, and I hit, a, I hit like, three, three Max Elixir, game one, and then game one, I just kind of, like, it, our game one was really close, too. Like, I just had enough, in, like, more energy in play than him. <laughs> and then game two, uh... He just, he got Salamance with three double dragon in play, and then I just, I just conceded. Mm-hmm. And then game three, I was up by a, by five prizes, 
So I started Evil Tall, Dark Guy, Dark Guy, Dark Guy, Shaman Hoopa. And he had, he had two Evil Talls. So like his, his play was like really slow. My turn one, like four energy, but I really went handy at the turn one parallel. I Shaman twice for six, I think. Um, but I hit the turn one parallel, which I was pretty happy about. But at the same time, I think it almost hurt me because I could have used it like like game two. Yeah, for sure. But his slow his his turn one was pretty slow because he was just like attach and and attach and mm-hmm. but that was like that just kept happening like over and over. Um but I had like so many energy in play because I just kept oblivion winging, attaching, and then max like three. So it was Kenny was like in a really bad spot right then in there, and then so it was it was I had, I was up um I had one prize left and uh, he had three VS seekers and two Lysanders in his discard. So I was like, he has one VS Seeker left, and I already had no card, but I still added in a, in a switch. So this is when I had four prizes, but I switched, and then and and then KO'd the Evil Claw. And I was like, if he doesn't draw the VS Seeker, then I win. And uh, he got the VS Seeker, so yeah, he course. just VS Seeker for the Lysander. But he still had six prizes left, so I was like, I'm just going to chance it. But I had to end it. I had to end anyways, but I had a floatstone still. So if like if he lies under something that didn't have experience here, then I think I could have still took it. Yeah. Well, huge congrats again. If you can Thank go you. back and change anything in your list, I know you already said the lily, but uh, would there be any other cards you would change? Um, I think a is cuttable as well. So neither of the new cards really helped you that much. Mm, definitely not Lily, but Kakui was clutch at points. But at other points, I felt like it wasn't needed. Like, it could have been something else. Sure. All right, so uh, the floor is here now. Do you have any shout-outs? Any, anything you want to say? Um, I have a shout-out to John Turner and Adrian Montoya for telling me to play Turbo Dark. And a shout-out to... Chris Abernathy, Kevin Abernathy, and Roberto Lozada to, because they're like, they're always telling me what to play, and me and Chris talked about Turbo Dark for a while, and uh, I just ended up playing it, so. Yeah. so. Thank you so much for sitting down with us, congrats again. Thank you. And uh, peace out, guys.